Welcome everyone to our Packers News post draft day two live stream virtually alongside Ryan Wood. I am Olivia Reiner. Tonight we'll be going over the two draft picks that the Packers made in the second day of the 2020 NFL draft. However, before we begin, I want to remind you you can be a part of our conversation as always. Make sure if you're over on YouTube or on Facebook, leave us a comment, leave us a question, leave us a thought that you're having, and we will try to address some of those toward the end of our conversation. Ryan, let's start by talking about the second overall pick that the Packers made in this year's draft, that being Boston College running back, A.J. Dillon. What stands out to me right away, I mean, six feet tall, 247 pounds, a big body for a running back. On top of that, he ran a 4'5", 340, pretty quick for a big guy. A huge, a huge workload that he had there at Boston College across three seasons, 845 career carries at BC. With his size and his ability to be a workhorse, how do you envision Dylan fitting into head coach Matt LaFleur's offense? He's the thunder to Aaron Jones's lightning and long-term, he might be the insurance policy too, with Aaron Jones coming off a breakout year, going now into the final year of his contract. We'll have to see. Uh, you know, A.J. Dillon profiles like a good NFL running back. He has to go do it. But if he does, and he, he's got the numbers, and you're right, the 247 is the first thing that stood out to me. Then you see 4, 5, 3, 40. That's solid. And then, the, honestly, the biggest thing that stood out to me is the 845 carries. I mean, no wonder he left after his junior year. He basically played four years of carries worth. Um, he was asked about that. Uh, also, uh, Mike Owen, the Packers scout, scouted him, was asked about that. Both said, look, he's, he's built the last. You know, he, he can be a workhorse. He's a guy that can keep getting the rock, and, and defenses know he's going to get the ball, and he still gets yards. So – he, he, he is a guy, you know, the Packers, you shouldn't be surprised that they drafted a running back this early. Matt LaFleur back at the combine said that he wanted a third guy to join the fray of their rushing attack, and it's for good reason. They just lost in the NFC Championship game to a 49ers team that has a three-pronged rushing attack and really rode that wave of those three guys. Kyle Shanahan, obviously a mentor to Matt LaFleur. They're cut from the same cloth. They're going to obviously run the ball a lot. So an A.J. Dillon, a running back in the second round, not a surprise. We've already discussed the 845 carries across his career at BC. One of the stats I'd like to mention as well is that he's had 21 career receptions. He doesn't have a lot of experience catching out of the backfield. We know how much Matt LaFleur likes his receivers to get involved in the passing game. How big of a, con of a concern is his lack of experience in that area? Brian Gudikin said a couple times uh, in his post draft uh, conference call with us tonight that he thinks that A.J. Dillon is more athletic in, in, than he's shown in, in the passing game and, and more capable as a receiver than what he was able to show at Boston College. There's more creativity, perhaps, more flexibility with his role that the Packers offense will provide that Boston College didn't. So they see him as a capable receiver, even though he didn't show that. Mike Owen, the scout that, that scouted him, said that in practice, you would see his hands. You would see his ability as a receiver. You just didn't see it in the game. And, and the way it sounds is it, it, they believe it's in large part because of the limitations of Boston College offense. So we'll see. But the way they think, they think he's a capable receiver. Ryan, we touched on this a little bit already. The number of free agents, 2021 is going to be a big offseason for the Packers. They have a lot of players that they're going to need to pay, choose if they want to pay including left tackle David Bakhtiari, defensive tackle Kenny Clark, Aaron Jones, and Jamal Williams. Both of the running backs are on that list of free agents in 2021. What does the selection of Dylan say about how the Packers view the future of the running back position? It, he, like I said, he's an insurance policy, perhaps. Um, you know, not to say that the, the writing is officially on the wall for Aaron Jones. Uh, I think that the Packers like what he brings to the offense for good reason, and if they can find an agreement, they, they'll, they'll certainly be open to that. But if they can't, they have they, they feel like they have a second-round running back, that the highest drafted running back since, since Eddie Lacy for this team, that can be a bell cow-type runner, that, that can carry the, the run game on his own. So 
Uh, certainly, it's, it's an insurance policy, uh, and you look at it as a whole, this draft has been very much about long-term decisions, long, long-range long focus, and, and not the short-term. And this is not to say that – and Brian Gutekunst is very careful to say that he believes both picks tonight, A.J. Dillon and Josiah Deborah, can help as rookies, but they're long-term plays as well. Let's move on to that second pick of the night. So in the third round of the draft, the Packers picked up tight end from Cincinnati, Josiah DeGuara, a little bit undersized for a tight end, 6'3", 240 pounds, much more undersized back in high school. He came out of high school 190 pounds. I mean, that's pretty light. He has been described as a tight end, a half pa- a halfback, a special teams player, Extremely versatile. That was a word that Brian Gutekunst used repeatedly in his post-draft press conference tonight. What role can DeGuara play in Matt LaFleur's offense? Yeah, he, he, Brian Gutekunst said a word that I don't recall him saying very often with, with guys in terms of positional fit. And He said everywhere. He can play in line with his hand on the ground. He can line up in the slot. He can go back to the backfield as either a fullback or an H-back. Uh, which is important because that's something that this team does not have. And as much as they're clearly going to be running the ball, you want to have a lead blocker. Well, Josiah DeGuara is the lead blocker. So uh, everywhere is is where he can play. You saw there 92 career receptions, which means that, yes, he is allowed to catch the football. So even though the Packers haven't drafted a receiver yet, they did get someone who can in some way factor into the passing game. Uh, which is needed. They, they, they need to find someone, and, and, and they certainly hope that he can blossom into a receiver as well. Ryan, let's take a little bit more of a macro-level look at tonight's draft. Pre-show, we had a pretty lengthy discussion about how important it was for the Packers to take a receiver in either rounds two or three of the draft tonight. Seven wide receivers came off the board before the Packers selected their pick, their first pick of the night in the second round. How surprised are you that the sole Packer, the sole receiving threat that the Packers selected tonight was a tight end? Stunned. I'm stunned. And, and I got for sure the idea of, of taking a, what they believe is a very talented running back in the second round. It, that's a need. It's not a luxury pick by any means. But the need was receiver. The, the, the bottom line of this draft was could they find receiving help? And – they haven't so far, and at this point, it's very unlikely that they will. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, you can't – long term is a totally different thing. If Jordan Love becomes a franchise quarterback, they believe that, that he can't be. Nothing else matters in this draft. That, that's, that's the draft, him being a franchise quarterback, because it assures contention after Aaron Rodgers. In the short term, they haven't done what they needed to do in this draft, and they needed to find receiving talent. They haven't been able to find that. So, you know, Brian Gutekind said at the beginning of the week, you're on the call, Olivia, he, that it's very important to pay attention to when the runs on receiver happen. He thought it'd go one of two ways. That they'd even go, either go early, every every team just snatching them up, or teams would go to different positions. They would postpone when the receivers are, are taken off the board. Well, it was the first. There was a run on receivers, six receivers taken before the Packers were on the clock in the first round, seven to nine. There's been 17 in three rounds. The Packers didn't draft one. That that's in the short term. That that's an issue because they've had they have a huge need at that position. No receiver for the Packers through three rounds of the draft so far in 2020. However, what they do have, if we take a look here, are three offensive players. It's the first time since 2011 since the Packers drafted three consecutive offensive players. Those players were offensive tackle Derek Sherrod wide receiver Randall Cobb, and running back Alex Green. You mentioned earlier, Ryan, that A.J. Dillon is the highest drafted running back on the Packers since the Packers picked up Eddie Lacy in the second round back in 2013. What do these first three picks of the NFL draft for the Packers say about the way they want to approach the offense going forward? That they needed to restock the offense, for one. This is the most heavily offensive slanted draft that there's been here in in years, I mean, really a decade. It's, it's been a long time since they've done anything like this at the top of the draft with the offense. Um, it also shows, look, the three picks, the three picks so far has been Aaron Rodgers' heir apparent, 
and two players that are really designed to help them run the football more proficiently, neither of which helps Aaron Rodgers be more proficient in the passing game. So that's, you know, it, it's been a pretty focused plan. They want to run the football. They wanted to make sure, first and foremost, that they got a quarterback they believe can be a franchise quarterback. They didn't get receiving help. That, that's been the draft so far. We're two days in. There's still one more day. The Packers have six more picks tomorrow. Let's bring up that graphic one more time. You can see exactly where the Packers will pick tomorrow. Ryan, we we were at the same point last night where we were discussing some of the needs that the Packers had coming into this draft and what they were. Wide receivers stood out. Offensive tackles stood out. Inside linebackers stood out as a potential pick for the Packers at some point in the draft. The Packers haven't picked up any of those positions. How big of a focus might those positions be heading into day three? Well, you'd think that they would certainly be a focus. You would have thought for receiver, at least, would be the focus in the first two days. Look, they're, they're protected at tackle. Um, they have a plan at tackle. They signed Rick Wagner. He can he can be a starting right tackle. They can get depth if they want to go out and get Jared Beldeer for, for a very fair, team-friendly price. They, they, they can kick the can down the road at, at tackle. They can also do that inside linebacker. They did sign Christian Kirksey. They, they can kick the can at that position. I, I don't see how you can kick the can at receiver. Who is the slot receiver for this team right now? They didn't have one last year, and the offense suffered mightily for it. They don't have one now. I mean, yes, Devontae Adams is going to line up a decent amount in the slot, but he's your best receiver. You want him on the perimeter of the field as well, and, and not just a little bit. So who, who is the slot receiver right now? There's no answer. They don't have a slot receiver right now. So that, that's not an ideal place to be after three rounds. And, and, and to couple that with the fact that this was an extraordinarily deep receiving class, to not tap into that uh, and, and fill a pretty glaring hole, um, it, 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 it's, it's certainly been a part of the story so far. What could the Packers do to fill that need at slot receiver? Let's head over to Facebook and answer some of your questions. GIF or JIF? not sure it's a very contentious pronunciation asks do you think that the packers could snag former bears wide receiver taylor gabriel to play in the slot how likely is it that the packers would be able to add gabriel on after the draft is over i, I haven't done any reporting with that to this point uh, honestly I, I i kind of expected the receiver to, to come from the draft at this point i would think all options are on the table i i would think that they, they would be looking at, at everything they can do to fill that position. And, and it, with each passing round, it becomes more and more unlikely that it'll happen with the draft. We'll see about that. Um, let's, let's go here with uh, Jared. Jared points out that Equinemia St. Brown, who was on a wide receiver who was on IR all season after getting injured in training camp, will be returning for the Packers as well as a couple of signings that they've made in the postseason as for some of these CFL players whose names are escaping me at the moment. What should the Packers' expectations be with St. Brown, who's missed a full year, and then some of these players who haven't had as much NFL experience as, say, the current receivers on, on the roster? Yeah, EQ had a really promising rookie year. Um, I don't think there's any question about that, especially for a six-round pick. He came in, he produced uh, as a rookie, which is you know, it's difficult to do for, for receivers. And, and it was promising. Now, that doesn't mean that he'll have a good second year. Devontae Adams in 14 had a, a, a really promising rookie year, struggled a ton in his second year in 15. MVS this year, he had a really promising rookie year in, in 2018. In 2019, he, he, he went into a funk. He struggled, and, and, and he's a really talented guy, and, and it just didn't translate to year two. So – you, you never know. Um, that That's part of the reason why it would have behooved them to, to have some protection and, and some depth, some, some more options at that position. But that's what happens when you don't take advantage of that. You, you, you kind of go with, with who you have, and, and EQ for sure is going to be someone that factors into this offense, you would think. At the moment, there is certainly some pressure riding on those wide receiver picks from a couple years ago to step up and to contribute to this offense. Let's take a question from Dash. It seems to be the general consensus of how a lot of these comments I'm seeing or feeling. Dash asks, did the Packers gain any ground for the, a Super Bowl this upcoming season? 
Ryan, how much better are the Packers today after these last three rounds heading into this upcoming season? The easy answer would be no, but when you really splice it, they're a, and, and this is important, they're a much better running team today than they were yesterday. Uh, they have more depth there. They, they have more, more talent and more ability to run the football. I do think A.J. Dillon is, is a guy that, that can play at this league. He tests very impressively. And when you look at the things that they wanted to do schematically, they needed to find a third runner. So that, that was important. Um, does it fix the, the most glaring issues? No, it doesn't. They, they, they needed more receiving help for Aaron Rodgers in the draft. Uh, it just – I, not not only in my opinion, but I think in, in, in most people's opinions. So uh, how much closer are they to getting over that final hump? It's hard to say they got much closer, but I, I will say, and it's not nothing, that they, they are better equipped to run the football right now than they were yesterday. Why don't we end on that somewhat note of, of optimism, Ryan? <laughs> so thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. We really appreciate it. We will be back tomorrow after the final rounds of the NFL draft. So make sure you come back to Packers News, any of our social platforms. Come watch us. Come interact. Come bring your questions, and we will do our best to answer them for you. Have a great rest of your night. I suppose wherever you are, it might be morning. It's morning in central time zone. So good morning. <laughs> we will see you tomorrow. Have a good one.